Hello everyone, my name's Lizzie and welcome to my yoga class. This is my first online yoga class, I do hope that you enjoy it. Um, today's class is going to be a relatively all-rounded practice, sort of really focusing on strengthening the legs, the hips, the arms, the shoulders, the chest. And um, with today's practice, and it's because it's an online practice, I won't be there to make any adjustments or help you. So you just need to make sure that you are really listening to your body, practice what feels right, and anything that doesn't feel right, just gently ease out. And part of the yoga practice is to develop that awareness of your mind, body, and soul, what feels right and what doesn't feel right, really tuning in and really listening to how you feel. So that's gonna be part of today's practice. And just keep thinking about those things throughout the class, you know, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Great. And also a couple of things for the class, a few props that you might have at home. So you can use a block. And if you've got a belt, that would also be great. If you haven't got a block, you might have a massive big dictionary of like this size, which you could use as an alternative. And if you've got a blanket as well, that can also be useful. So if we're in any sort of kneeling positions and you find that it's quite hard on your knees on the ground, then you can sort of kneel on the blanket and that should sort of soften and ease things for you as well. So just a couple of things that you can use to assist you in today's class. Okay, so I'd like us to begin today's practice in um, Shavasana, so lying on our backs. So anyone that's new to yoga, Shavasana is basically the translation for corpse pose. And corpse pose, lying on your back, stretching the legs out, let the feet flop out, arms are at your side with your palms facing up. And then if it's really comfortable for you to do so, just gently close your eyes. So at the start of a yoga practice, it is quite nice just to arrive into the space. So as we're arriving into the space, I'd just like you to Think about any worries, concerns, plans, lists that you may have and just park those just outside of the, the door of the room that you're practicing your yoga in today. And I promise you, you can come back to those at the end of this session. And the yoga practice today is solely for you, giving yourself that time in the present moment to connect with your mind and body, nothing else. This is for you, this practice serves you. As we've arrived in the space, I'd like you to bring your awareness to the external sensations that may be going on outside of your body. So things like sounds, the sound of my voice, the sounds coming from outside, maybe there's some sounds in the room, and the temperature, and how does the temperature feel against your skin? And then bringing your awareness now to your body. And how does your body feel today? Take a moment to scan from the head all the way down the feet and back up again. Maybe you're feeling calm and relaxed. Maybe you're feeling a little bit stressed, stressed and tender. However you're feeling today, that is absolutely fine. 
We feel different from day to day, but just be aware that how we feel today may affect our practice. But that's also okay. But it's just again about developing that awareness. So I'd like you now just to observe for any tension in the body. Notice where that tension is. Maybe it's in the mind. Maybe it's in the chest, in the legs. And hopefully we'll ease out that tension through breath work, through the asanas and through relaxation. And I'd like you to bring your awareness now to your breath, the natural rhythm of your breath, breathing in and out through the nose. Observing that breathing in and out through the nose. Don't force it, just that rhythmic breathing. And if your mind is starting to wander, just come back to observing that rhythmic breathing. And if that proves difficult, you can imagine that your thoughts are like clouds in a deep blue sky. And just imagine that those thoughts, those clouds float away. You can also imagine that your thoughts are like waves in an ocean. Let the wave come and then let it wash over you and let it go. Let the thought come. Don't attach onto it. Just let it go. Don't try to attract it. Don't try to push it away. The more we try to hold on to a thought or the more we try to push away a thought, the more it stays in our mind. So just observing it as a witness, just letting it go, does make things easier. Now I'd like you to observe where you notice your breath. Do you notice it in your nose, in your nostrils? Do you notice it in your neck? Do you notice it in your chest? Or do you notice it in your belly? And wherever you notice it, that is absolutely fine. Again, it's just about developing that presence, that awareness of our body and our breath and our mind. And I'd like you to bring your awareness now to your belly. And you may wish to place your hands on your belly as you do this. So as you inhale, as you breathe in, the belly rises, the lower back contracts. As you exhale, the belly drops, the lower back relaxes. As you inhale, the belly rises, the lower back contracts. As you exhale, the belly drops, the lower back relaxes. And just continue to observe that synchronization of the breath with the movement of the belly. As you inhale, the belly moves up. As you exhale, the belly draws in. Just continue to observe that pattern just to yourself for a few moments. Again, if your thoughts are wandering, just come back to observing your breathing. Inhaling and exhaling with the movement of the belly. And try not to force the belly either. Don't really squeeze it out, just make it a natural movement as you do as you breathe normally. I'd like you all just to start counting your breaths now. So I'd like you to count your inhales and then count your exhales. So when you count your inhales, 
we make count to four. So inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Now just repeat that to yourself for a few moments. Breathing in and out through the nose, counting the breaths with the movement of the belly. Now I'd like you to add a pause to that. So as you inhale for four seconds, then pause for two seconds, and then exhale for four. So inhaling for four, one, two, three, four. Pause, one, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Pause, one, two. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Pause, one, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And just continue that. As you're counting your breaths, I'd like you to observe what happens during the pause. Is the mind quiet during the pause? And then come back to natural rhythmic breathing. Just observing how your body feels. Are you feeling a little bit more grounded after that breathing practice? As you notice the weight of your body against the ground. And when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. And let's now move into some warm-ups. Okay. So we're going to just begin by really doing some nice warm-ups on the legs. And then we're going to move up the spine, work on the arms and the head. And then from there, we'll move on to some sun salutations and then into standing postures and seated postures. So we're going to begin by taking an inhalation and raising both legs up vertically. And as we've got our legs vertical, we're just going to begin by just rotating the ankles. So about 10 in one direction. Just breathing normally in and out through the nose. And then 10 in the opposite. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And if your legs are already tired, you can just gently draw the knees in for a moment. And then from here, just stretch out your left leg. And you may wish to see a sort of keep that leg flexed. So when you've got the leg flexed and the foot flexed, you're really activating that leg. Or you can keep that leg relaxed. And then inhale, keep that right leg up straight now. And we're going to move, what we're going to do is we're going to slowly exhale, lower the leg halfway, and then we'll pulse the leg. So I'll demonstrate. So from here, exhale, begin to lower the leg halfway. So I guess that's like 90 degrees. And then from here, pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale again, and then just so your legs are uh, hovering off the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Inhale, raise that leg. And just so you know, um, we can just keep breathing normally, but normally when we lift our limbs up in yoga, we tend to sort of inhale. And when we lower our limbs and when we fold forward, we exhale. So that's why I sort of make the suggestion of um, exhaling when we're lowering our legs. So again, exhale, lower the leg halfway, then pulse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, lower the leg, so it's hovering off the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, raise that leg. Exhale, lower the leg back down. So we're really just working on strengthening that whole leg. And we're working on the core essentially as well. Taking an inhalation, raising the left leg up vertically. And then exhale, lower the leg halfway down. Pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And exhale, lower it down so it's hovering off the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more time. Inhale, raise the leg so it's vertical. And then from here, exhale, lower that leg halfway down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, exhale, so you're lowering it down, so it's just hovering off the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Inhale, raise that left leg, and exhale, lower the leg down. And you may wish to draw the left knee in towards your chest, just releasing any sort of tension that may have built up in the hips. Okay, and then from here, I'd like to inhale and bring both your legs up vertically. And then what you're going to do is you're going to exhale, lower the legs down halfway and hold, I'd say, for we're going to hold it for five this time opposed to ten, because ten is quite a long time and it's quite strong with both legs. And then we're going to hover our legs off, just off the ground as well and then hold for ten. So from here, exhale, lower the legs, hold it halfway. One, two three, four, five, exhale, low, so they're just hovering, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, raise those legs, so they're vertical, one more time, exhale, lower the legs, so they're halfway, and then hold, one, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, and then you can draw your knees in towards your chest. So that was quite hard work on the core and on the pelvic region and also on the psoatic muscles that attach sort of, basically the psoatic muscles, they run down the legs and they attach right to sort of the, the bottom of your um, rib cage and they run through the hips. Okay, and then from here again, so we're doing quite, quite a bit of strong leg work today. But if we have strong legs and strong hips that can physically support us and mentally support us as well, because we do tend to hold a lot of tension and stress in our hips. And if anyone is interested in the, the chakras and the root chakra, which is positioned at the base of our spine, when this is blocked, we can feel sort of unstable, ungrounded, insecure. And I think during a time like we're going through at the moment, a moment with the global crisis, bringing groundedness through the legs, through the hips, can really sort of bring us back to feeling secure and stable. Okay, so taking an inhalation, raising both legs up. And we're going to begin by just pedaling the legs out. So... Again, we're just working on strengthening those legs. 
So just imagine that you're riding a bicycle. So we're going to do about 10 in one direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then in the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then gently draw the knees in again for a moment, taking an inhalation. Exhale, release the left leg. Take an inhalation, raise that right leg up and see if you can place your hands around your calf and try to keep your shoulder blades and your shoulders against the ground if you can. And just draw the knee, the, sorry, the leg in as close to your, your chest as you can or just as comfortably as is comfortable for you. So as you inhale, stretch that leg out, stretch the foot out. As you exhale, flex the foot and bring the toes in towards you. And you'll really feel that stretch on the hamstring and the calf. Inhale. Exhale, bring the toes towards you, flex the foot. Inhale, release. Exhale, flex the foot. Inhale, release. Exhale, flex the foot. And then very gently release the whole leg back down to the mat. Taking an inhalation, raising the left leg up high. And with your right leg, that can be active and engaged, or you can just let that leg rest as well. And then wrapping your hand around your calf. And if you find that difficult, you can just bring it a little bit higher, or you can just hold your hands, have the hands wrap around your thigh as well. So again, inhale, relax the foot. Exhale, flex the foot. So you're, when you flex that foot, you're really feeling that stretch in the hamstring and in the calf. Inhale, release. Exhale, flex. Inhale, release. Exhale, flex. And try and keep your shoulder blades against the ground as well. So inhale, release. Exhale, flex. Inhale, release, exhale, flex, and then gently release the leg back down to the ground, exhaling, lowering that leg. And then bring your knees up, making sure that your heels are just below your buttocks, bringing your arms out to the sides. Okay, you're just going to move into a nice little sort of supine twist. So we've done quite a lot of core core work and leg work there. So let's just sort of wake, begin to wake the spine up now. So in the supine twist, taking a deep inhalation through the nose and then exhale, drop your knees to the right and then bring your gaze over to your left palm or the left hand side. And just feeling that stretch in the left hand side of the body and feeling that nice twist in the spine. Inhale back to centre. Exhale, drop the knees to the right and then bring your gaze over to the left. Uh, your gaze over to the right, your knees are to the left. Feeling that stretch in the right hand side of the body. Inhale back to centre. Exhale, drop the knees to the right, bring your gaze to the left. And then repeat a few more of those just to yourself. Inhale back to centre, exhale on the twist. Inhale back to centre, exhale on the twist. Inhale to centre, exhale on the twist. And then back to centre. And again, if you need to draw your knees in towards your chest, just feel free to do so. And then drop your legs back down and then from here we're just going to make sure that our sort of pelvis is neutralized and we know that our pelvis is neutralized when we've got that natural arch forming in the lower spine in the lumbar spine 
So the lumbar spine is um, the lower part of the spine. And then you've got the thoracic spine, which is the middle part of the spine. And then you've got the cervical spine, which is the upper part of the spine. So the lumbar spine, that does that natural arch. So when we create that natural arch, we're sort of lifting the, the lower back up. And when we lift the lower back up, you'll notice that our hip bones then sort of are at an equal height with our pubic bone. When we drop the lower back, the, the, hip, the hip bones sort of lower and they tilt. And you'll notice that the pubic bone does sit slightly higher. So bring that natural arch to the back. Okay, and then from here, taking an inhalation, raising the arms overhead. And then exhale, low the arms back down. Inhale, raise the arms overhead. Exhale, low the arms back down. And one more time, inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, lower the arms back down. And then from here, when you're ready, very gently roll the head from side to side. Waking up the neck, waking up the upper part of the spine. So the, the, the neck is an extension of the spine, the cervical spine. And then come back to centre. And from here, we're going to gently get up now. And we're going to come onto our hands and knees. So before we sort of really get moving and warmed up in our sort of sun salutation sequence, let's just sort of wake up the spine just a little bit more in cat cow. So beginning in tabletop. And in tabletop, we just want to make sure that our hands are directly below our shoulders. Hands are shoulder distance apart. Bringing the weight into your fingertips. And then our knees are sort of directly below our hips and our knees are hip distance apart. So moving into the cat-cow sequence, when we're in cow, we drop the belly, stick the bottom out, tilt the head back, taking an inhalation. And then as you exhale, draw the navel in towards the spine, tuck the tailbone in, drop the crown of the head towards the mat. Exhale. Inhale, drop the belly, tilt the head back, stick the bottom out. Exhale, draw the navel in towards the spine, tuck the tailbone in, drop the crown of the head. Inhale, tilt the head back, tilt the, stick the tummy, stick the bottom out. Exhale, draw the navel in, drop the crown of the head towards the ground, tuck the tailbone in. And then back into cow. Cat, cow, cat, cow. So we're gently waking up the spine here. And this is really nice to practice first thing in the morning. So when you come back from work, if you've, if you've been sat at an office desk all day, you can practice this before bed as well. And then come back to centre. Then I'd like you to place your hands at the front of your mat. Again, making sure your hands are shoulder distance apart. Bringing your weight into the fingertips. And just imagine you've got a bit of a suction going on between your palms and the, um, the mat. And then from here, tucking your toes in. And as you tuck your toes in, I'd like you to lift your knees off the ground. And as you lift your knees off the ground, begin to push your hips and your buttocks up and back. And as you push your hips and your buttocks back, see if you can sort of bring your heels down. And not everyone will be able to bring their knees down and that's absolutely fine. And if you want to bring a good bend in the knees as well, that can help you to push those hips up and back. So really imagine that you're pushing the mat away from your hands. So we're now we come into downward dog, Adho Mukha Shavasana. So we're really sort of working on keeping that spine straight. So sort of tucking the chin in, bringing your gaze in sort of either towards your feet or sort of in between your legs or sort of at your navel center. If you wish to pedal your legs out as well, feel free to do so. And if at any point in this practice you need to rest, which I forgot to mention at the start, just come back into a child's pose. So child's pose, you come onto your knees, 
sit your buttocks back on your um your heels and then exhale fold forward bring your arms out to the sides or you can have your arms stretched out in front of you so you you're either resting now in child's pose or you may still be in your downward dog and if you are still in your downward dog taking an inhalation raising the right leg up high keeping the um if you've got your heel completely down on your left foot keep that down if not that's fine and then taking an inhalation either step or sweep that foot in between your hands coming into a low lunge so in a low lunge the chest is open and you're pushing your hips forward and down and then from here looking straight ahead then bring your left foot to meet your right foot into a forward fold and in forward fold you can have your palms down you can be on your fingertips at the side of your feet if it's more comfortable you can have your hands in front of you keeping the navel tucked in the belly tucked in and then from here very gently coming up one vertebrae by vertebrae at a time inhale as you come up and then exhale to center so the starting stance in a lot of the standing poses in, uh, in yoga is uh, Tadasana, well classically in Hatha yoga anyway. In Ashtanga yoga, um, the starting stance, this sort of Tadasana tends to sort of be um, a moving pose, whereas in Hatha yoga, um, Tadasana is like a standing pose on its own to begin with. So in Tadasana, rolling those shoulders back and down, keeping the tailbone tucked in. You can have your palms on your thighs, keeping your gaze straight ahead. And your feet can either be together traditionally, or you can have your feet hip distance apart. And if you bring a tiny little micro bend into your knees. So if you stand with your legs, your knee on full lock, as I'm doing right now, you notice that you bring your weight on towards the back of your feet. So if you bring that micro bend in, you're sort of evenly spreading the weight in your feet, which is how you want it to be. So just standing into Dasana just for a few moments with your, either your palms on your thighs or your palms facing the front of the room, just take a moment to close your eyes. Just breathing in and out through the nose. Just observing the weight in your feet. Just noticing if the weight is evenly spread or if the weight is on one foot or on the other foot. And then noticing if the weight is evenly spread on both feet. Now I'd like you to bring your weight to the front of both feet. Then to centre, to the back of the foot. To centre, to the back of the, uh, to the front of the foot. To centre, to the back of the foot, to centre, to the front of the foot, and then back to centre. And you may wish to keep your eyes closed, or you may wish to have your eyes open. Then I'd like to lift all your toes off the ground. And as you lift all your toes off the ground, just notice that natural arch that forms under your feet. And then drop the big toes. Pinky toes and then all the toes and just observing if you're squeezing any muscles in your legs as you do so so again lifting all the toes off the ground dropping the big toes the pinky toes and then the rest of the toes so this is a really nice practice just to help to develop the muscle that um, the plantar pasio, which is the muscle that helps to create that natural arch in the feet. So when we're wearing sort of trainers and shoes every day, that actually causes our feet to flatten. And so that natural arch of the foot is, can be quite weak. So just practicing lifting the toes up and down off the ground can help to, to, to develop that muscle as well. So hopefully we're all sort of standing at the front of our mats now. And we're going to move into the sun salutation sequence. Okay. Actually, we just going to move this mat slightly. 
So the starting stance in the sun salutation sequence is called Pramanasana, prayer pose. So your hands are together at your heart centre, so your thumbs are sort of in between your sternum, looking straight ahead, keeping that tailbone tucked in. Taking an inhalation circle, sweeping the arms up. Bring the arms overhead, bring the palms together into Hasta Uttanasana, raised arm pose. And you may wish to bring a little back bend in, or you can just stay stunningly straight. Then exhale, fold forward. So you can either bring your arms straight down, or you can circle, sweep your arms down, bend the knees, and then forward fold into Padahastanasana, forward fold. So bring the head towards your knee, keep the belly tucked in, your hands are by your side. Taking an inhalation, step the left foot all the way back, drop the left knee to the ground, keep the chest open, look straight ahead. So this is like a runner's lunge, a low lunge. This is called Anjanasana in yoga, the Sanskrit term. Place the palms completely flat, then bring the right foot to meet the left foot into a high plank. So in high plank, you don't want your bottom to stick out. You want your bottom to tuck in, tuck that tailbone in. You want your hands directly below your shoulders. And then very gently exhale, coming down in one movement, dropping the body to the ground or dropping the knees to the ground and slowly coming down. Exhale, keeping those elbows tucked in. Dropping everything down to the ground, keeping your legs tucked in, keep those elbows tucked in. Taking an inhalation, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the bottom. Inhale, lift the chest into the baby cobra, Bhujangasana, or full cobra, lifting the whole chest up, but still keeping that micro bend in the, the elbows, looking straight ahead. Exhale, lower the head down. And then pushing into the hands, lifting the hips up and back into a downward dog. So really pushing those thighs towards the back of the room and making sure your hands are shoulder distance apart and your feet are hip distance apart. Taking an inhalation, sweeping that right leg all the way up and high and then sweep it or step it through into a low lunge, dropping that left knee to the ground, looking straight ahead. Anjan Asana. So you can either have your palms flat or you can be on your fingertips. And then bring your left foot to meet your right foot into a forward fold, head to knee. You can bring a good bend to the knees as well, which releases pressure in the lower spine. Inhale, circle, sweep the arms up. Into Hasta Uttanasana. And then exhale into Pramanasana prayer. So that's half a round and that was done on the right hand side. Taking an inhalation. So starting uh, in Pramanasana, prayer pose, taking an inhalation circle, sweeping the arms up into Hasta Uttanasana. Exhale into forward fold, Padahastanasana. Head to knees, good bend in the knees. Inhale, step the right foot back, right knee to the ground into a low lunge, looking straight ahead, the chest is open, keeping that tailbone tucked in. Bringing the palms completely flat. Then bring the left foot to meet the right foot into a plank. So keeping that tailbone tucked in. So imagine that you're one long muscle. Then exhale, pressing down or dropping the knees and then dropping everything else down. Keeping those elbows tucked in. Pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. Taking an inhalation. Lifting the chest off the ground into baby cobra or full cobra, Bhujangasana. Keeping the micro bend in the elbows. Exhale, low the head back down, pushing into the hands, lifting those hips up and back into a downward dog. So really pushing the mat away from your hands, keeping the spine straight, taking an inhalation, raising that left leg up high, sweeping it or stepping it through, whatever feels right for you, dropping the right knee to the ground, looking straight ahead, and Janasana low lunge, then bring the right foot to meet the left foot into a Hasta, Uta, hasta pada, pada Hastanasana, a forward fold, good bend in the knees, taking an inhalation circle, sweeping the arms up, Hasta Uttanasana, exhale into prayer. So that's one round, so we're going to just speed up a little bit, just so we can get a bit of um, 
the flow going. Beginning in prayer, taking an inhalation, raising the arm. Exhale, forward fold, head to knees, good bend in the knee. Inhale, step the left foot back, left knee to the ground into a low lunge, looking straight ahead, the chest is open. Pressing the palms down, bringing the right foot to meet the left foot into a plank pose, either the dropping the knees or exhaling, pressing down in one movement, coming all the way down, keeping the legs together, keeping the elbows tucked in, taking an inhalation and raising the chest off the ground into cobra or full cobra. Exhale, lower the head down. Pushing into the hands, lifting the knees up and the hips up and back into a downward dog, making sure your feet are hip distance apart. Taking an inhalation, raising the right leg up high, sweeping it or stepping it through into the low, into low lunge between your hands, bringing the left knee to the ground, looking straight ahead. Then bring your left foot to meet your right foot into a forward fold, head to knees. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale into prayer. Let's do one more. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, forward fold, head to knees. Good bend of the knees. Inhale, step the right foot back, right knee to the ground into a low lunge, looking straight ahead. Bring the palms down, bring the left foot to meet the right foot into a plank pose, keeping that tailbone tucked in. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Keeping the elbows tucked in, taking an inhalation, squeezing the glutes, lift the chest off the ground into baby cobra, full cobra, keeping those shoulders down. Exhale, lower the head, pushing into the mat, lifting the knees and the hips up and back into a downward dog. Taking an inhalation, lifts up, lifting the left leg up high, sweeping it or stepping it through into a low lunge, dropping the right knee to the ground, looking straight ahead. Then bring the right foot to meet the left foot into a forward fold. Good, bend the knees, keep that belly tucked in. Then inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, bring the hands to heart centre in prayer. And you can take a moment here just to rest in Tadasana, closing the eyes. Or you can grab hold of opposite elbows and you can... Um, Bring your feet sort of hip distance apart. And then gently forward fold and let the head sway from side to side, very gently. Just gently breathing, letting the head hang loose. And then when you're ready, very gently, one vertebrae by vertebrae at a time, come up with the head the last to come up, back to center. And then gently just roll the shoulders one at a time or both at once in one direction and then in the opposite direction, just to release sort of any sort of tension that may have built up from doing the sort of press downs in the sun salutation sequence. Okay, and then from here, bringing your feet together, or you can have your feet hip, hip, hip distance apart. So we're going to be balancing on the balls of our feet in this Tadasana variation. So keeping the tailbone tucked in, taking an inhalation, raising the arms up, interlocking the hands, then pushing the palms up, exhale, and then come onto the your tippy toes, the balls of your feet, really pushing into those big toes and breathe, really feeling the stretch in your legs and in the full body, breathing in and out through the nose, Engaging those legs and then exhale, lower the arms and then lower the heels. So you're getting a nice stretch in the side of the body, in the legs. You're really sort of working on the, the muscles in the feet as well. Again, taking an inhalation, raising the arms. 
Interlocking the hands, exhale, push the palms up, coming onto the balls of your feet, onto your tippy toes, pushing into those big toes, hold and breathe, in and out through the nose. If you need to, find a point to focus on somewhere. Breathe. Oops. And then very gently exhale, release and lower to the ground. One more time, taking an inhalation, raising the arms. Interlocking the hands, pushing the palms up, exhale, then coming onto the balls of your feet, breathing in and out through the nose. Finding that balance, joining the strength in your feet. And exhale, lower the arms, gently come down onto the heels. And if you're still all at the front of your mat, so making sure you're about one foot from the front of the mat. And then from here, you're going to step your left foot all the way back. And you wanna make sure that your left heel is in line with your right heel and your left foot is going to be, so for you, you're going to be looking at this the other way around from me. So your left foot is going to be at nine o'clock and your right foot is going to be at 12 o'clock. So moving into Viravadrasana two, warrior two. So keeping those shoulders roll back and down, the chest is open and the tailbone is tucked in. So you're just imagining that everything is aligned. So our chest and our hips are sort of stacked, but actually in warrior two, we are turning in that left um, hip slightly. So taking an inhalation, raising the arms, they're in line with the shoulders, keeping those palms facing down. And then your gaze is gonna to be towards your middle right finger. Then exhale, bring a right angle, into your um, right leg. And you just want to make sure as well that your um, leg, your feet are about five feet apart as well. Just take a look at the back arm for a moment and then the front arm just to make sure they're aligned. And just make sure that your kneecap and your ankle for, on your right leg are also um, aligned as well. So just breathing in and out through the nose. So the more parallel your thigh, your right thighs with the ground, the deeper the stretch as well. And if you find that your knee is overstepping your um, right ankle, just slip that foot forward a little bit because you do tend to put quite a lot of pressure on your ankle if your knee is overstepping. And then from here, exhale, gently release those arms. Stretch out, that, uh, straighten that right leg now. So moving into Trikonasana. So in Trikonasana, we keep keeping a very similar stance to um, Warrior Two. So Trikonasana is triangle pose. And you may wish to have a tiny little micro bend in your right knee. So you can have your leg in full lock, but actually you're not going to be working the muscles quite as much. So if you have that little micro bend, you are working the muscles around the leg just that bit more. So making sure the tailbone is tucked in and our hips are more square in this pose than they were in uh, warrior two. Taking an inhalation, raising the arms. So they're in line with the shoulders. And again, look towards the back arm. So that'll be your left arm. And then look towards your front arm. Just again, checking that they're both in line and their shoulder height. Okay. And your palms want to be facing down. Uh, sorry, your palms want to be facing um, towards the side of the room, so that would be your right side of the room. And then exhale, really begin to reach forward of that right hand. And as you reach forward, either bring it onto your thigh, onto your calf, or if you've got a block handy, you can have the block here onto a block, or you can place it on the, just to the, left of your right foot. Keep breathing, then roll that left shoulder back. So imagine that you're stacking your left and your right shoulder, then inhale, raise that left arm. Look up to the left hand if that's com comfortable. If you find there's a strain on your neck, just look to the side of the room. And you want to imagine 
that your shoulders are pressed against a wall. So if you find that you're bending over too much like this, just come up. So if you're quite tall like I am, it is a bit better just to come up a bit more so your hand might be on your calf or on your thigh. And just keep feeling that stretch. So really in this pose, you've got really strong legs, really weighing down through the feet. The weight is evenly spread in the feet really actively engaging those legs and then we're sort of stretching to the sides so we're getting a really nice stretch in the right hand side of the body here keep looking up to the hand strong legs weight is evenly spread in both feet then inhale come back to the center exhale lower the arms and then turn that right foot in if you need to just bend the knees a moment if you feel like that's causing a bit of tension. And then keeping your legs where they are, then bringing your hands onto your hips. Keep the chest open. So again, this time you want your weight to sort of be on the outer edges of your feet now. On the back of the foot, on the ball of the feet and the big, big toes as well. Keeping that tailbone tucked in. Thank you. As you then from here, I'd like to start folding forward. So this, this pose is called, um, it's like a wide legged fold, forward fold. And the translation for that is a prasarita parpottanasana. So exhale, begin to fold, forward fold, hinging from the hips. And then just come down about halfway, keeping your hands on the hips. And then keep your gaze downwards. So don't See, I'm looking up at the camera. When I look up at the camera like this, mm -hmm. I'm actually causing a curve in my neck. So just keep your gaze down and breathe and keep that belly tucked in. So you'll be feeling a really good stretch in the hamstrings here. Got the hips open as well. You're feeling a stretch in the calves, really working on those feet as well, developing the muscles in the feet. Just breathe. And you're very gently inhale. Come back up to centre and gently release. And then from here, turn your left foot towards, um, bring your left foot to 12 o'clock now. So your left foot is at 12 o'clock and you're keeping your right foot now um, in the same position that it was just in, in that pose. So your left foot is at 12 o'clock and your right foot is at, um, three o'clock. So keeping that tailbone tucked in, we're now moving into warrior two on the opposite side. So we're just doing a nice little sort of flow sequence here. So turning that um, right hip in slightly, keeping the tailbone tucked in, the chest is open, the shoulders are rolled back and down, taking an inhalation, raising the arms so the palms are just sort of facing down and the arms are shoulder distance apart. Just look up to the back, just look towards the back arm and the right front arm, just to make sure that they're both in line. And then from here, taking an exhalation, bring a right angle now into that left leg, making sure that the left knee and the left ankle are in line. And then more parallel again, that your left thigh is with the, the mat, the deeper the stretch. So just really on, we're really working here on opening up the chest, opening up the heart centered, receiving that love, opening up the hips here. We're both working on both hip flexors here, strengthening the legs, the feet, making sure your gaze is at the front of the hand. Breathe, doing really well guys. And then gently release, exhale, lower the arms. And if you just need to sort of if your legs are getting quite tired now, you can just turn that left foot in a moment and just bend those knees just a moment. And you can stretch the legs, bend the knees, and then bring your left foot back into that 12 o'clock position. And your right foot now is in um, three o'clock. And again, just making sure that your feet are about five feet apart distance and the heels are aligned as well. So again, um, moving into Trikonasana on the other side. So we're basically not really turning that right hip in like we did in Warrior Two. So the hips are a little bit more square in this pose because 
in um, trichinasana triangle pose, you have to imagine that you're sort of really straight up against a wall. So just imagine that the shoulders and the hips are stacked. Rolling the shoulders back and down, the chest is open. Taking an inhalation, raising the arms. Have the palms facing the side of the room. So for you, your palms will be facing the left hand side. So I'm mirroring you, but I'm not actually uh, mirroring you exactly with um, my right and left, because I do tend to get those quite confused at the moment. But I am working towards uh, that for you guys. <laughs> so making sure that the arms are shoulder distance apart. Uh, sorry, the arms are sort of shoulder height. Looking up to the front hand, the left hand. Then begin to reach forward, and as you reach forward, exhale. Then again, either bringing your hand onto your left thigh, keeping a little micro bend in that left knee, or you can have it in a full lock, whatever feels right for you. And then either bring your hand onto your thigh, onto your calf, onto the mat, just to the right hand side of your left foot. Then rolling that left shoulder back, taking an inhalation, raising the left arm up vertically with the palm facing the direction um, that your chest is facing out at. So you don't want your, arm, your hand to be backwards. You don't want it to be facing the back of the room. You want it to be facing the side of the room in the direction of your gaze. If your gaze is facing the side of the room. Otherwise, if your gaze has come up to your hand, you're looking essentially at the palm of your hand. So breathing in and out through the nose, feeling that stretch in the hand, the left hamstring here, the left calf, really feeling that stretch in the right hand side of the body now. Imagine that your, your shoulder blades are pressed against the wall. And then very gently inhale, come back to center. Exhale, lower the arms. Turn that left foot in now. So again, Moving into that sort of wide-legged forward fold, making sure that both your heels are sort of aligned, and just um, just bring your legs out as far as is comfortable for you. So keeping that tailbone tucked in, and then this time, so before we had our hands on our hips, this time take hold of your hands, interlocking your hands, rolling the shoulders back, opening the chest a moment. Take a deep inhalation. And then exhale, begin to fold forward. And as you fold forward, hinge forward from the hips. And then just come halfway. And just making sure actually that your toes are sort of pointing inwards as well. A little bit. And then bring your arms up halfway. And breathe. And then make sure that you're sort of drawing your shoulder blades towards one another. So we're really opening the chest here, working on those, um, those shoulders. Breathing in and out through the nose, keeping your gaze down. Then very gently inhale, very slowly, very, very slowly come up. Exhale, release the arms and then just toe heel the feet in. Come back to centre. And then from here, if you'd all like to rest in child's pose for a moment, just come onto the mat and bring your feet onto your heels. And then from here, exhale, fold forward. And you can either have your arms stretched out in front of you, your forehead on the ground, or you can have your arms out at the sides. Just breathe in and out through the nose. Just observing how the body feels and how the mind feels. How is your mind speaking to you? Is it saying, oh, I did this well. Oh, I did, did, didn't do this very well. So rather than attaching on to what the mind is saying about how you have, have performed, just observe it and whatever it says, just let go. And then when you're ready, very gently taking an inhalation, raising the head. Exhale, come back to centre. 
and then from here we're going to come into a squat pose so malasana garland pose so i would say that your feet are going to be uh, about hip distance apart and your knees are going to be in line with your toes so some of you may find this quite difficult and you might find this painful in the knees or you're going to find this really hard on your feet and you might just be balancing on the balls of your feet and that is absolutely fine if you're finding that hard as well and you have your block handy you can just sit on your block okay and then from here taking an inhalation bringing your hands together into prayer and pressing your elbows into the um, inner edges of your knees just to the sides just on the inner sides of your kneecaps so working on opening the hips here keeping the, um, the spine straight just breathing in and out through the nose so if you're not balancing on a block you're going to be feeling that more in your feet and in your ankles and you're going to be feeling a deep stretch in the ankles you're going to be feeling that nice hip opener you're going to be feeling it in your upper back as well if you're keeping your spine relatively straight so just breathe and then very gently release and just for a moment just sit back on your sitting bones and draw the knees in towards your chest just releasing any tension that was sort of built up there and then release and we're going to come back into that squat now so from here we're going to sort of practice moving into um, crow pose but we're not going to do the full um, posture unless some of you are very um, aware of um, this pose that I've practiced this many times before so what we're going to do is um, yeah you can have that block in front of you here and I want you to Bring your hands, so your hands are sort of going to be directly below your shoulders, shoulder distance apart. Really spread the weight, bringing the weight into your fingertips. And your feet are probably going to be about a hand behind your hands. Hand away, sorry, behind your hands. Okay. And then from here, see if you can... Uh, bring your either your your knees just to the outer edges of your um, your sort of your triceps, or you can see if you can bring your knees just into your elbows, and then I'd like you to work on lifting your right heel off the ground, drop it, lift the left heel off the ground, drop it again, the right heel up, drop the left heel up, drop. And then with your block, just bring it so it's directly below your head and just work on bringing your head onto the block and just see how that feels. And you're just breathing normally here, and just observing what happens, how you feel with that. And for those of you that already do practice crow in your own yoga practice, you can go ahead now. So taking an inhalation, then bringing your weight into your hands and then bringing your weight, bringing your knees onto your triceps and then lifting your heels off the ground and breathe. For those of you that don't do that, you can just come back now into seated and then just drawing those knees in towards your chest and then exhale. And when everyone's ready, when they've come out of their crow pose, gently release, just take a moment to rest. And then from here, stretching your legs out straight in front of you. So beginning in um, staff pose, so rolling the shoulders back and down. When you actively engage those legs, so strong legs, you flex the feet and when you engage your legs, the feet lift off the ground. So rolling those shoulders back and down, gently tucking the chin in, breathing in and out through the nose. And we're going to move into Pachimottanasana, a seated forward fold. So in a seated forward fold, we sort of work on sort of 
hinging from the hips. So we want to keep the spine sort of relatively straight. So if we end up rounding the back and we're going forward, we'll be like this. So taking an inhalation, raising the arms. So you've got option one, exhale, bring the hands onto your, your shins. You may be here, keeping that spine straight. Option two, you can come a bit further, bringing your hands onto your ankles. Option three, bringing your hands around the outer edges of your feet and breathe. And exhale as you fold forward, keeping that navel tucked in. We're working to, on, so here we're working on the spine, you're getting a nice hamstring calf stretch, sort of working on um, the shoulders as well, the shoulder girdle area and the deltoid muscles. Inhale, raise the arms. Just do one more dose, so exhale, come forward, fold, keeping that belly tucked in as you fold forward, and you may just come here and that's fine. Just breathing in and out through the nose. And then gently inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, release the arms down. And then from here, I'd like you to bring the soles of your feet together. So coming into Baddha So for some of you, so when you bring the soles of your feet together, wrap your hands around your feet and just see how far you can bring your knees down. And if that's uncomfortable, you can either use two books for your blocks to, um, just to balance underneath your knees like so. And then from here, taking an inhalation, keeping that spine straight. Keep the belly tucked in and then exhale, fold forward as far as is comfortable. So we're getting a nice sort of stretch on the hips here, opening up the hips, opening up that root chakra. The spine is straight as well, working on the shoulders and the lower back. And then Jenny, inhale. Come back to centre, exhale, release. And then I'd like to stretch your legs out. So we're moving into Upper Vista Konasana, wide legged um, leg pose. So from here, keep those, just bring your legs out as far as is comfortable for you. And rather than keeping bringing your toes forward, see if you can externally rotate your legs. You're externally rotating your legs in your hip sockets. So your feet, your toes and your feet are coming sort of towards you opposed to away from you. So option one, just bring your hands behind your back and you may wish just to be here, making sure that both your sitting bones are on the mat as well and the chest is open. And then just breathing in and out through the nose. That's option one. Option two, Bring your hands out in front of you and then just walk them as far forward as comfortable. But when you're walking forward, try to keep your spine straight. And as you're walking them forward, exhale, keeping that belly tucked in. That's option two. And just making sure you're keeping your feet, uh, your legs externally rotated. Option three, bringing your forearms to the ground and breathe. So you've got three options to play with and anyone who does a, an even stronger practice can exhale. Just keep walking your hands forward and bring your head down. But that's very, very strong and a lot of people can't do that. So just again, this is all about listening to your body, tuning in with what feels right. Anything that doesn't feel right, just gently ease out. This is not a competition. Yoga is about the journey, not the destination. How we get there, not why we, not when we get there. And then gently walk the hands back in. Inhale as you come back up. Exhale, draw the legs back in. And then gently hug the knees in towards the chest. Gently release the legs now. And then from here, I'd like you to come to lie on your bellies, on your mat. Okay. So we're going to be moving into Salam Bhatsana, Lotus Pose. So your forehead is now on the ground. 
your palms are facing up. Your legs, I would say, are, your feet are probably about hip distance apart as well. So we're going to move, um, there's going to be three stages to this pose. So on the first stage, taking an inhalation, raising your forehead off the ground, raising your chest and breathe. And then just notice where you feel this in your body. You will feel this in your lower back and your upper back. So you're working those muscles here. So the trapezius. And then exhale, lower the head back down. Then on the next time round, you're going to inhale, lift the head and the chest, lift the shoulders away from the ground and stretch the arms, the hands towards the back of the room. So taking an inhalation, lifting the head and the chest, lifting those shoulders, really reaching towards the back of the room with your hands. Breathe, breathe, and then exhale, lower the head and everything back down. Then on our final round, taking an inhalation, lifting the head, the chest, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, and the legs, really squeezing those glutes as well, really reaching towards the back of the room with your legs, your feet, your hands, Breathe, strong legs, strong buttocks, and then gently release everything down, let go. And then you can bring your arms to, uh, out in front of you, your hands resting on top of one another, and you can just bring your forehead just to rest on your palms in Makrasana pose, crocodile pose. So just breathing in and out through the nose. Really feeling the body against the mat now. And then gently coming onto your back. Moving into the, the, one of the final poses of the, the session now. Making sure that your, um, your heels are close towards your buttocks and your legs are hip distance apart. Your arms are beside you, palms facing down. Take a deep inhalation through the nose. Raise the hips up, keep raising them up. Then roll the shoulders under, bring the shoulder blades in towards another, interlock those hands, keep the palms, the sides of the hands pushing into the mat, breathe, keep pushing those hips up, making sure the legs are parallel, keep breathing in and out through the nose, really breathing into that belly, massaging those internal organs, and then gently release, coming down one vertebrae by vertebrae at a time, exhale as you come down. And then gently drawing the knees in towards the chest. Take an inhalation, bring the head towards the knees. Exhale, lower the head down. Gently rolling on the lower back from side to side. Massaging the back. And you may wish to draw little circles with your knees as well. Little circles or big circles, whatever feels right for you. And then when you're ready, Gently release everything to the ground, coming into Shavasana. So letting those feet flop out to the side, bringing your palms to face up. And if it's comfortable to do so, gently close your eyes and you may wish to grab a blanket at this time as well. So final resting pose, Shavasana. Corpse pose. So again, once you're in the final resting pose, again, just reminding yourself of the space that we're in and the external sensations that are going on outside the body. So that'll be things like the smell, the temperature and the sounds. Just reminding yourself of those things. And again, how do you interact with those things going on outside your body? And then now bringing your awareness to your body. And how does your body feel now compared to the start of the practice? And just take this time to scan from the head, down the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the spine, the pelvis, the legs and the feet, observing for any remaining tension that's left in your body. 
any remaining tension. And if there is any remaining tension, I'd like you to take a deep inhalation through the nose. And then exhale that tension out through the mouth. Deep inhalation through the nose. And then exhale out that tension through the mouth. One more time, deep inhalation through the nose. And then exhale out that tension through the mouth. And with breathing out that tension, the body becomes more and more relaxed. feels relaxed against the mat, the neck feels relaxed against the mat, the shoulders feel relaxed against the mat, the arms feel relaxed against the mat, the hands and the fingers breathing into the hands and the fingers, the back and the torso feel relaxed against the mat, the pelvis feels relaxed against the mat, the legs feel relaxed against the mat and the feet feel relaxed against the mat, including the toes. Really breathing into those toes and breathe out of those toes. As you inhale, feel that energy moving up around the body, rejuvenating you. And as you exhale out, feel that energy and any remaining tension leave the body. And if your thoughts are starting to wander, just come back to observing your body and your breath. The natural rhythm of the breath as the body relaxes into the mat. And as the body relaxes into the mat, it feels heavier. And as it feels heavier, it feels as if it's melting into the ground. The body feels relaxed, the mind feels relaxed, the natural rhythm of your breathing is relaxed. And it may be helpful for you to notice the movement of your belly up and down with the breath. As you notice the body and the, as you notice the belly and the breath, Notice how relaxed and calm and rejuvenated your body feels. Your breath is deep, smooth and continuous. No pauses, no jerks and no irregularities. The breath is relaxed. The body is relaxed. And with the stillness and calmness that this yoga practice has brought to you today, hopefully you can take this off the mat and into the everyday real world. Slowly begin to wiggle fingers and toes. Begin to rotate your wrists, your ankles. Stretch the legs. Stretch the arms overhead. 
take a full body stretch. And when you're ready, gently rolling onto the right hand side into the recovery position or the fetal position, using your right arm as a pillow. And when you're ready, pushing into that left hand, come up into a seated pose into Sukhasana. So in Sukhasana, we sit cross-legged. If you find it uncomfortable to sit cross-legged, you can just have your legs stretched out in front of you. You just want to make sure that your spine is straight, your shoulders are rolled back and down. Keeping the chin tucked in, keeping those eyes gently closed as well. Rubbing the hands together, creating warmth, creating energy. And placing your hands over your face. Feeling that warmth, feeling that energy. And gently open your eyes, gazing into the darkness of the hands, gazing into stillness, gazing into peace, gazing into oneness. Gently bringing your hands to heart centre in prayer. Namaste. Thank you for practising with me today. I hope you enjoyed my first class. Thanks.